Hi guys, this is Jimmy from Case Group and in this presentation I'm going to show you some of the new features in V-Ray 2.0. I'm going to show you where you can find them in the interface and I'm also going to give you the basics of how you can use them. Later I'll make separate videos and discuss some of the features in more detail. The first thing I want to start with is that if I select a rendering engine for the active shade, you'll see that we now have the V-Ray RT here. So, as you probably know by now, V-Ray 2.0 comes with the RT included and you can use the, this interactive technology both running on CPUs and on GPUs. So this is pretty useful and it will really speed up uh, your workflows when you have to uh, shade and light your scenes. While we are still in the render setup, I just want to show you a nice new feature that we added to the V-Ray frame buffer. So I'm going to show the last frame buffer. And what you'll see here is that we have this button which has the letter H on it, which is the V-Ray frame buffer history. We can actually use it to save the history of the images that we have previously rendered. And we can actually set A and B images and compare between those images very easily inside the V-Ray frame buffer. So uh, this is pretty useful and many of you are going to probably use this. Okay, so we're done with the render setup. And I want to continue by going to the Create tab and going to the Light section. I'm going to go to V-Ray and just make a V-Ray plane light. If I scroll down to the options of the V-Ray plane light, you'll see that we have a new parameter called Directional. I can actually increase this parameter to make the V-Ray uh, plane light more directional. And if I set the value to 1, the V-Ray plane light will be completely directional. Uh, this is pretty useful if you want to have actual V-Ray lights that are directional and you can also put textures on those lights. While we're still discussing uh, the subject about lights, I'll go to the Tools option and you'll see that we have an option called V-Ray Light Lister. So the V-Ray Light Lister actually allows me, uh, if I have several lights in my scene, I can very quickly uh, see all the lights in the scene and adjust some of their settings from the Light Lister. This will make it very useful for you, especially if you have scenes with uh, many lights and you want to adjust their settings from a convenient place. The video light lister is going to be very useful for you. Okay, so next I'm going to go to the helpers and show you the Vira stereo rig. So I'll go to the Vira menu and you know that we have this stereo rig which actually allows us to render stereoscopic images. But the new thing here that we have is this uh, set of options in the shade map group. The shade map actually uh, options actually allow us to um, create a shade map which is a map of all points in the scene that are seen from the camera and how they are shaded and we can later use this uh, map to quickly render stereoscopic images much quicker than just uh, directly rendering them. The shade map is also very useful if you want to render such effects as motion blur or depth of field as uh, this will speed up the rendering of those effects and it will really be a, um, the effect will be really visible if you need to render animations in which case the shade map will really speed up the rendering of the final images. Next on the list I'll go to the F environment and effects menu and the first thing I want to show you he is here in the environment uh, tab in the exposure control rollout we have an option called V-Ray exposure control. The V-Ray exposure control actually allows us to apply the color corrections from a V-Ray physical camera to a perspective view or, or to graphic view or if for some reason you want to render through a max default camera you can also apply the exposure corrections to the max default camera. Uh, this way I don't need to use necessarily through a V-Ray physical camera I can use through I can use any of the other possible possibilities and render with this um, with the correct exposure control. And this will be probably very useful for uh, architects who want to render their exteriors from uh, one of the orthographic views and you want to still have the correct exposure. You don't need to worry about uh, the intensity of the sun now. You can just set the exposure by using these options here. While we are still in the environment and effects menu, I'm going to go to the effects tab and I'm going to click add and you will see that we now have an option called V-Ray Lens Effects. So if I add this, I can actually create um, very nice boom and glare effects. And as you know, if you render 
an image where you have very bright objects in, with V-Ray, you may get some problems with the anti-aliasing. The reason for this is that uh, bright objects like this actually create some boom and glare effects to uh, smooth that out. And now you can use the V-Ray lens effects to actually create accurate boom and glare effects with your V-Ray renderings. Next we'll go to some of the render elements. And first of all I want to show you the V-Ray element called DR bucket. So if I add this render element, uh, this will create another image in my rendering and this will be very useful because it will actually show me by color which bucket was rendered by which render slave during DR rendering. And this will be very useful especially uh, if I have some problems with missing maps or something like this. And I can uh, very quickly identify which of the slaves is missing the maps and I can fix the issue right away just by identifying uh, which bucket was rendered by which uh, render slave. The next render element that we have is the V-Ray Light Select. And the V-Ray Light Select is very useful because it actually allows you to extract the contribution of a single light or several lights and extract this contribution to a render element. Then later you can use a compositing software to combine all those render elements back together and you can play with the color corrections of each render element and this way you'll have much greater control over the final illumination in the scene. And this will really speed up your workflow when you need to set up the lighting because the other approach would be to just uh, try and set up the lighting in V-Ray and render every time you change something uh, on the light. Finally, we'll go to the material editor and we'll see some of the new materials and textures that we have. I'm going to start with the textures. And the first one that I want to mention is the V-Ray multi -sub texture. The V-Ray multi -sub texture is very useful because it allows us to control certain parameters of uh, any material or texture based on the IDs of the faces or of the objects that the material is applied to. And this way I can have one material applied to several objects and I can just change, for example, its diffuse color based on the ID of the objects. You'll see it looks pretty, it sounds pretty complicated, but you'll see in the video for the multi -sub texture that is very useful and very easy to use. The next texture that we have is the V-Ray distance texture. This texture actually allows us to measure the distance from a shaded point to an object or a set of objects that we specify in this list here. And uh, this way I can uh, assign a color based to the point based on its distance to this uh, object. This is very similar to the dirt map and there is one big difference however. Uh, the dirt map requires some ray tracing in order to be created and the V-Ray distance texture uses completely different uh, approach. And another cool thing is that this is actually, it is actually calculated before the rendering takes place. This makes it very useful if you want to, apply to use this texture for example for um, displacement or to control some of the parameters of a V-Ray fur which shouldn't be possible with the V-Ray distance texture, uh, with the V-Ray dirt map. The next thing I'm going to show you is a new option that we have in the V-Ray material. I'm just going to add a V-Ray material and uh, if I go down to the refraction part of the parameters you'll see that we now have an option called dispersion. So as you know dispersion is the effect uh, that appears when a light passes through a refractive object and then in the caustics you can see some interesting colors. This is because the different wavelengths are refracted differently and you can actually see the parts of the white light uh, in the caustics. And V-Ray actually now can uh, simulate that effect and you just enable the checkbox and you have the AB parameter which allows you to actually uh, control the spread of the dispersion effect. Again you'll see this uh, in another video and you'll, it will get uh, very clear. The next thing that we have is another shader, a new shader that we actually introduced, is the V-Ray Car Paint material. The V-Ray Car Paint material actually allows you to very quickly create uh, realistic car paint shaders and you don't have to use the blend material anymore. You have instead the V-Ray Car Paint material which is again a layered material. You have uh, four layers on top of each other and you have base layer which has uh, diffuse color and then you have reflections. Then you have a layer for the flakes, for the small metallic flakes and then on top of it you have the cold layer. Finally, I want to show you the V-Ray Meta SL map. 
which actually allows me to, rent to load MetaSL shaders and to render them within V-Ray. So these are some of the new features that we have in V-Ray 2.0 and we're going to discuss some of them in much more detail in the following videos. I am Dimitar Krstiv Jimmy and I thank you for watching.